Right. Okay, so these are the things you're gonna need. Masking tape, cartridge paper, A5 size, a print, a bit of graphite, and a purple or blue biro. You can use a black biro, but purple or blue will show up better. So step one, turn over your image and rub the graphite all over the back. Make sure it covers every single bit. And where necessary, right to the edges. Although there isn't much that comes to the edges, but there and there. So I'll make sure that's the edge. Okay. So you will have a sheet covered in graphite like that. Next thing you do, do step two, is to turn it over, place it on top of your A5 cartridge paper. However, at the top of here, leave a tiny space. So you've got your cartridge paper, then this a bit further down. Line it up. Oops, there we go. It's important that you've got that bit like that because when you stick this down with the masking tape, the masking tape needs to adhere to not only the print but also the garbage paper, so it needs to be able to grasp both. Press that down firmly, and then I tend to just fold that last bit a little bit over. So now I build it open and close this constantly and it will not separate or move from the cartridge paper. Right, once we've done that, what we are going to do is we want to create a perfect line drawing, an outline of the objects within here. I'm not looking at shading or tone or anything like that at the minute. I just want to pick out the key shapes from the picture. So I'll get started up here. If you have troubles keeping a straight line, then please feel free to use a ruler on the straight sections of here, okay? So that one's not too bad. Going round, you can see the little lip there, coming back down. Not too sure what's happening there, so I've guessed a little bit. Then back round. Keep going down. Again, I've made slight errors. You've got to try your steadiest, like keep your hands steady so that you stay true to the line. But you know, little tiny discrepancies won't matter too much. Here my image stops, but I can guess that that handle would come out to here and round up there. So if you can, you can guess those bits that, that go slightly off the image. Okay, so there's the outline of the handle. I'll not forget this little hole in here as well so I'll fill that in up and that's completed the, the first shape but then also there's this line here so I'm going to go in there as well stop at the corner that comes round and follows down like that um okay I oh yeah I'll start on the metal parts now so there's obviously a ridge here as well so you need a line on that part and then also the second bit there. Okay, so that makes it look 3D. Come down, follow the metal part around like that. And then there's a little bit hiding under here. The little cog. And try not to miss any details off. So even that little side of the roller that we can just see, you're keeping that in there. Every so often, just open it up and check there that the image is coming through, okay? If it isn't, then you need to apply more um, graphite stick to this part, okay? So you can go back in and think, I'll just add a bit more because it's not transferring very well. Right, so then just keep going and cover out as many marks as you can, and as many lines as you can, okay? See so that we have perfect outlines left. So I'm going to keep going with this one. Oh, yeah, sorry, you will end up with something like this. So that's fully done. There's my outline drawing. I have a look. Well, I finished. Could go over more. I could do more detail on the ruler. So potentially, I could go back. And okay. 
Okay. You got the gist. Okay, so we're looking for line work, just outlines, okay? We're not shading anything in just yet. And keep going until you're happy with the shapes that you have. And then we'll move on to step two. Right, okay, so I've started adding biro and pencil now to my image in the style of Jim Dine. He did quite scribbly lines. So I've added some in the pencil and I've gone over some bits with pen. So in the brushes, there was a lot of texture on there. So I've gone in with biro and pencil. I'll go over this paintbrush now just to show you what I did. So it might not be too obvious to see, but there is a slight shadow on this side of the brush. So the first thing I'm going to do is just plot in a little bit of a shadow that runs all the way down that paintbrush so that I am aware of which side the, the light is shining and like I did on the side, there's a, a little um, slither of shadow going down. I might make that darker later, but I'm shading that in for now. Then there's also some lots of cracks and details. I'll hold this closer. There's little marks here, a lot of texture and dirty bits around here. There's quite a dark patch here. So I'm coming over with that and then back down. I might decide to go over that with Biro like that to make it a bit darker. I might do more by later, though I might plot this mostly with pencil. We've got more smudges down here, some more shading down here. There was a lot more texture on this one, so I did a more, lot more broken lines, but there's still a lot of lovely texture on this paintbrush, so I'm going to add it in as well. Right, and then the metal up here, the lines seem to go over like this, so I'm going to do some nice, loose, messy kind of lines and then following the contour of the brush so it's going round like that not just straight lines but slightly arched like that to show the contours um for some reason they are darker on that side so that i might go over again or just put some shading down that side for some reason that's slightly dark and there was a dark reflection line here as well and then a bit of a dark accuracy where it meets the brush and then again, when you come to the fibres, make sure you follow the direction of the fibres. So I'm going to flick my pencil up like that. And maybe use the biro just to emphasise some of those fibres as well. Okay, so go back and forth with your pencil. Try and create some texture. And then after this, we'll introduce some charcoal and in ink to really highlight those shadows make them really nice and dark like Jim Dine's work okay so that is the end of part two so just start adding texture and tone to your tools in the style of Jim Dine okay remember he was very scribbly broken lines quite faint some of them some of them quite heavy so mix them up a little bit and we can always come back to this after us and keep working into it Okay, but if you get the initial scrapes and textures down, um, we'll have a great start to your drawing. Okay.